Welcome to our YouTube channel, One Race, Human Race, All Human. Today is Saturday, March 5th, 2022. Josh Letterman for that reporting. Coming up, reports of racism as people flee Ukraine. The Ukrainians who are, who are let in, and the, and the foreigners here are segregated to one side. What stories like this could reveal about the struggle refugees face around the world? That's next. And they all should be treated equally and fairly because we spend a lot of time this. If there is one race, and that's the human race, and all people on this planet known as Earth have right to life, liberty, pursuit, happiness. Charles Blow, New York Times cop. And should be treated with dignity and respect come up everywhere doesn't matter what they look like where they come from i did that everyone should be treated equally we're all god's children we're all made in the image of god the face of ukrainian refugee crisis was in the news this week as videos and reports surfaced of black people many of them african students attempting to flee the Russian invasion of Ukraine and being met with discrimination and refusal at border crossings, deprioritized in favor of white Ukrainians. A reminder that even in the worst of global human crisis, race can and all too often does come up. Joining me now is Charles Blow, New York Times columnist and host of Prime with Charles Blow. Uh, Charles, is it fair to say, plain and simple, that this Ukraine refugees crisis should be a reminder that all refugees are black and brown, are not black and brown, uh, that anyone can be a refugee, and they all should be treated equally and fairly, because we spent a lot of time this week, some of us in the civil rights community, talking to the U.S. State Department and the U.N. about intervening on these reports absolutely reverend um and thank you for having me uh, i mean what it shows us is that in times of severe stress when you don't have the opportunity for reflection when your first thought is your only thought that racial tribalism comes rushing to the forefront and that becomes the motivating actor as you just described it is you know bomb Everyone there is in danger. Bombs and bullets do not have brains. They do not know if you're Ukrainian or if you're African, and they don't care, right? And so everyone there is in the same level of danger, and yet the instinct of some people, it appears from both the video we've seen and from the reports of the people who said that they were discriminated against, that that racial tribalism was the trump card and was the activating motivator yeah. for the people who were, who were directing people onto those trains. And I should say that I, I've talked with some senior members of the State Department here who are looking into it uh, because this is extremely troubling, the videos and, and uh, the reports we're getting, and we're going to stay on it. But, Charles, do you get the sense that we will see anti-Russian sentiment here in the U.S. that could potentially become violent. On the other side of this, can we see in this country some anti-Russian sentiment? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, one of the, the very the heartening things about uh, this crisis, and particularly young Russians, both in Russia, thousands of them have been uh, uh, arrested because they were demonstrating and saying, not in my name, you will not commit this sort of uh, atrocity, war crime in my name. And also, we've seen the same thing from a Russian expat in other countries saying, this is not what I want to be associated with. I think that that is very heartening, actually. I don't think that it, it is a tit for tat uh, in that way. I do think it will be difficult, however, to try to, to, to get some justice for these black people who were, who say that they were mistreated because, uh, the, the, you know, Ukraine is a cesspool of corruption. 
corruption, including the judiciary. And there's no uh, way of knowing whether or not even after this, if it will be Ukraine or if it will be Russia. No way of knowing if the the prosecutors would be willing to bring any kind of case right. in this way. No way of knowing if these Africans would even want to go back into this environment to pursue those sorts of cases. So it's just it's a very difficult situation on all fronts. Now we're out of time, but I must ask you: Do you think this crisis in Ukraine is in any way bringing Americans closer together? Uh, or further apart. I, I mean, we saw what's happening with some bipartisan efforts in terms of the Congress and the meeting with Zelensky today. Is there any sense that uh, uh, you and I deal with the divisions in this country all the time in our work? Is there any sense that this might be one issue that there's more coming together of American citizens in terms of dealing with this crisis? Well, I think what happens is when you show people any group of people, including Americans, human suffering, the natural humane response to that is to have compassion and empathy. The problem I think that some people are having is that we don't show the same human suffering of other people who are not white in the same way. And so I think people are drawing a, a distinction and, and, and saying, let's just compare these two things or these several things and how we respond differently how, how even neighboring countries around Ukraine respond differently to Ukrainian refugees as opposed to F F refugees who are not white and who are not European and, and drawing out that difference. I think, yes, we're united in the sense that we, you know, uh, human beings who are suffering deserve sympathy. But we're not united because in the sense that all human beings yeah. who are suffering deserve the same sympathy. Are we doing the same for everyone, even in moments of unity? Charles Blow, thank you for being with us tonight. Up next, my final thoughts. It will be the first time that many of us will march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge that John Lewis and Hosea Williams and... After the show tonight, I will be traveling to Selma, Alabama to join for the commemoration of the historic march from Selma to Montgomery in the Civil Rights Movement of the 60s. I'll be preaching at the Brown Chapel AME Church, which was the headquarters for Dr. King and others then. And I'll be saying to them that we must pray for the people in Ukraine because we understand when your democratic principles are threatened. It will be the first time that many of us will march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge that John Lewis and Jose Williams and uh, Amelia Boynton and others were tear gassed and beaten since John Lewis's death. The last time he was there alive, I was among those that held him up to speak. I thought about what John Lewis would say to us. He would challenge the world to make sure that not only do we stand consistently for democracy in Ukraine, but stand for it in states that are changing laws in this country. And you cannot fight for democracy globally and not fight for it domestically. But he would also challenge us to pray and stand with children, victims of an evasion that's running for their lives, that we should not become as insensitive and selective in our outrage as those that we fight. Yes, we must deal with the reported bigotry at the borders, but we must not become in any way insensitive to the fact that there are people under siege and we must not like act like people that have treated us the same way. That does it for me. Thank you for watching. Alicia Menendez picks up our news coverage at the top of the hour. people should be treated equally with dignity and respect all people everywhere Jesus said 
I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. But let me read it from the beginning of John 10.10, 10, where Jesus says, <laughs> The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Where is the Jesus Christ? In John chapter 10 and verse 10. It means that all people on this planet known as Earth have a right to life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Be treated with dignity and respect. If you turn to Luke chapter 14 and verses 12 to 14, Jesus speaks about true, authentic, real compassion, real concern, real generosity, caring for all people equally. All people on this planet have a right to be treated with dignity and respect. All people, everywhere, everywhere on this planet we are one and the same and we must treat all people the same way it doesn't matter what country it doesn't matter if they have a tan or don't have a tan it doesn't matter there's one race the human race and we're all God's children the Lord cares for all of us and loves each and every one of us. So authentic generosity, authentic compassion, authentic concern is equal across the board for all people everywhere. Jesus loves all of us and we've been created by God equally. Love and compassion and concern for one another, lifting up those who are weak and helping them, those who can't help themselves. I understand why NATO's not going into Ukraine right now because um, the no fly zone, because of the fact that um, uh, President Putin has talked about his nuclear weapons and. Um, they're afraid of World War III, which could end the entire world. And they're sending, you know, what they can send over there. But the point is, uh, Dr. King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Peace, diplomacy, speaking to one another at the table and working for life, all life. From birth to our senior years and then until we get to heaven hopefully God bless you and God keep you